Welcome to another episode of Get It Girl. On today's show, we're gonna talk about breadcrumb dating with behavioral relationship expert, Tracy Crossley. And on the couch today, we have two fierce women, Paulina Chavez, the star of Netflix upcoming multicam Latinx comedy series, co-created by Mario Lopez. Very exciting. And we also have Charlotte Larson, the Australian producer of Awkward Love. So do not go anywhere because Get It Girl is about to start. been on an amazing first date just to have the person completely fall off the face of the earth because I totally have. <laughs> well, according to a recent survey by Plenty of Fish, 80% of millennial daters have reported being ghosted or just permanently ignored by the person that they were dating. But sometimes your ghoster suddenly reappears as though nothing ever happened, which is completely strange. But apparently that's a dating phenomena that has a name. It's called breadcrumb dating. And according to experts, this unhealthy pattern can follow couples long into their relationship if you're not careful. But thankfully, guys, we have behavior relationship expert Tracy Crossley to help us with that. Welcome, Ooh. Tracy. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you for joining us now we were chatting a little bit off camera and it's like who doesn't like to learn more about relationships mm -hmm. and dating right but this is like a very specific thing being ghosted is one thing yeah. but being breadcrumbed it's like wait do you like me do you not like me so can you expand a little bit more on what that means breadcrumb dating so basically you go out on a date with someone and let's say you feel some chemistry and you believe it's mutual, and maybe you go out on a few dates, and this could go actually go on for weeks, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking you're getting into a relationship, you're having a good time, and then you notice that the person starts to kind of fade out, and maybe you go, you know what? Let me find out what's going on with this person. Mm -hmm. So you call them and you go, okay, what's going on? And they're like, oh, nothing, I'm busy. And then the person does a total fade out, and you believe that they're gone, and then let's say two weeks, two months, I mean, it doesn't matter what the length mm -hmm. of time is, they show back up mm -hmm. and they act like nothing happened a lot of the time as well. So what happens is you, because you had such a great, let's say first date or first mm. several dates, you're caught up in it. You're attached to this because you may think, okay, this person came back. They must think I'm special. They must have missed me. Um, and you really find that you're stuck with them. They have mm -hmm. this charm and they're like charismatic. I have a friend that uh, actually for years she was with this guy back and forth all the time like mm -hmm. and so once she managed to get out of it he managed to get her back in. The thing with the person that's leaving the breadcrumbs is that they're not always playing a game even though it looks like it. Oh. They have deep-seated fears. They have a fear of intimacy. They have a fear maybe they're going to be with the wrong person. Mm. They start to feel engulfed. A lot of them feel responsible very quickly. So all of those high feelings that they have in the beginning start to feel really heavy because now they're thinking, I'm responsible for this person's happiness. I'm yeah. responsible mm. for the, where the relationship goes. And a lot of people, and this is men and women, not just men, mm -hmm. yeah. but a lot of people get very caught up in those old stories that they have about what happened last time. I had a client, as an example, who was in two abusive relationships, mm. and so he just didn't want to get close to anybody. Yeah. He didn't want to have a relationship with yeah. somebody. Yeah, no, that's that's tough, and I'm sure there's like yeah. layers of trauma behind that mm -hmm. as well. What are some solutions that you know someone can do if they are being breadcrumbed? Like, because I also believe that you show people how you want to be treated. So one of the things that is super important is staying in reality. Okay, a lot of us with those high feelings, we start building a fantasy, we start building a future that isn't happening yet. Mm -hmm. And so it's really to stay in the reality, what is happening now? What is actually going on rather than what do you want to have go on? Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of it. The other thing that I believe, and this applies more to women, I'd say, than men, but when they're in that situation, they're afraid to say certain things. They're afraid to ask questions, yeah. to be honest, to be truthful, and yeah. that's a great place to be yeah. because then you're going to find out pretty quickly. Mm. Well, let me take that back. <laughs> you, you're going you're to find out pretty quickly that there's something else going on because a lot of times, like in my case, 
I would have these conversations and I'd be reassured that no, everything is great, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to trust your instinct that no, everything isn't fine and you have to take yourself in hand and do something hard, which yeah. is to stop being in this yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so hard and I wish we could have a whole hour special to talk to you because I have so many more questions. But you guys, this is our time with Tracy. Um, thank you again so much for coming. How can people thank find you. you online or get some more tips from you? They can go to tracycrossley.com and they can also Google Tracy Crossley and they'll find all my social media and everything. Perfect, well thank you again. You guys, we have to take a quick break, but we will be right back. Our next guest is a total powerhouse. She's a young age and has been featured in several TV shows and films. And now she's the star on a Netflix show about a rocket scientist teenager, Latina, that gets the chance to work at NASA. How cool is that? Please welcome <laughs> Paulina Chavez. Ooh, welcome, wow, you are girl. so cute. Yeah, I can't get you. over it. Having me. Of course. You go, girl. You go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we are wow. so excited. Yeah. And I just have to say, finally, like a Latinx show that's not about immigration yeah. or like, you know, different, okay. like, mm -hmm. just different things and Cleaning boxes that they put us yeah. in. It's so refreshing to see a young Latina yeah. being portrayed as just this smart, empowering, mm -hmm. like, woman so yeah. this is so exciting can you tell us a little bit more about the premise of the show yeah, the expanding universe of ashley garcia is about this 15 and a half year old latina who is the youngest person ever to earn a phd wow. and she gets her <laughs> dream job at jpl where she's going to build robots for nasa oh. and she moves in with her uncle victor uncle victor was a pro football player and is now a high school football coach <laughs> but aside from all work um, ashley just wants to be a teenager and she wants to have the teenage experience yeah. It's a sitcom. It is. It's a multi cam mm. sitcom. <laughs> so are there any parallels between your character and you in real life? Oh my god, yeah. Um, we both have overprotective moms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> One Latina does it, honestly. Exactly. Love you, mom. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, um, Ashley Garcia, she worked hard in getting her degree and getting her job, mm -hmm. and now she's focusing on her her life. Mm -hmm. Same with me. I was homeschooled at eighth grade, in uh -huh. eighth grade, and um, I was working hard and taking focus on my career. And basically, we didn't both we both didn't have our teenage experience, so we're not having it now. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. You get yeah. to like find it in other ways. But exactly. this is so exciting. You're working with huge names, Mario yeah. Lopez. Yes. Um, I know you've worked with Eva Longoria as mm -hmm. well. Yes. So what what like lessons have you learned from both of those people who have had longstanding roles in the entertainment industry? Always being humble. Yeah. They're so humble and loving for everybody. They just bring good energy to the mm -hmm. set. It's yeah. wonderful. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you've been acting since you were, because you're very young. Yeah. So when did you start? How was your process? So, um, I started when I was in second grade. I think I was seven years old. Um, wow. I started at the drama club in the school, elementary school. And that's when I did um, films like, um, not films, theater things like Aladdin, Little Mermaid, um, <laughs> stuff like that. Cute. And when I went to middle school, um, it wasn't the same. Mm. So I decided I wanted to do film acting. And so I started taking classes, started traveling to Dallas a lot. I'm from mm. Texas, mm -hmm. San Antonio. So I would travel a lot. And that's basically been my journey. Are you based here in LA now? I'm still based out of San Antonio, okay. but I go back and forth a lot. Mm. OK, I love it, I love it. Now, once the show comes out, um, what is something that you hope people take away from it and its themes? That young people can do whatever they want, whatever they mm -hmm. set their mind to. They just have to work hard and dedicate themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about like a fun experience on set? I know your uncle is played by Giancarlo Canella. Yes. Canello, right? <laughs> Canella. <laughs> Butchering that Canella. name. <laughs> um, so give us some like fun stories. Yeah. I'm sure that oh you guys gosh. have a really fun dynamic on set and in yeah. the show. I mean, Giancarlos is like my uncle in real life. Oh. He's like my older brother. Um, uh, before we wrapped the show, we were having tickle wars. <laughs> I would tickle him, he would try and tickle me, we would lunge at each other. But it, we, we were just full of laughter. It was, there was oh. no dull moment on set. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's, that's so amazing. Nice. Now, I'm, I'm sure excited. the transition from Dallas to them working in Hollywood mm. has been 
probably polar opposites and very <laughs> crazy. So like, what's something that you've taken from the experience that you want to continue to carry on in your career moving forward? Um, everybody on set for the Expanding Universe, super sweet. Mm. The whole vibe on set was just full of positivity energy and mm. it was just wonderful. And I hope to, when I work on any other project, to bring that positivity. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so great. you excited for this new journey? Like, yes, what I mean, are your expectations of this? I don't even know. I'm learning as I go. There's so much to it. <laughs> There's so um, much to so do. So much. I, I'm just enjoying life. Mm -hmm. I'm living nice. in the moment. How yeah. does it feel to know that by you being in this show, I mean, Netflix is such a huge platform, mm -hmm. that you are going to represent um, inspiration for a lot of young yes. girls. Is that a lot of pressure for you or do you feel like you're ready to carry the torch? I think, I think I'm ready. I mean, yeah. it's such an honor to play a role like this and I know the kids back home in my old elementary school, I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always go back and volunteer and mm -hmm. help out with their theater program and it's just, it's cool to know that they look up to me in a way. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm, I hope to continue that. Oh, I love you that. Will. <laughs> you will. <laughs> you will. We're so get it. proud of you and Thank just you. so excited. I know this is not the last time that we'll be <laughs> no. seeing you oh, as no, a star no. of a new show. So thank you so much for sitting oh, down with us. Thank you for having me. Thank and you. Um, you guys, we're gonna be right back, but you guys do not switch the channel because Get It Girl is coming back. <laughs> Film producer Charlotte Larson might be from Down Under, but she is quickly rising to the top. The New Zealand-born and Los Angeles-based producer and actress is best known for her work as an executive producer for the New Zealand hit series Awkward Love. And today, she is here with us. Mm. Charlotte, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Amazing, mm. thank you for joining yes. us. Yes. So let's get into Awkward Love a little bit. Um, okay. What is this show about? Tell us about your journey as the executive producer on it. Yeah, um, so it started with um, Holly, who is, she's uh, one of the characters in the show. She created it, um, and it's just about 20-somethings trying to date in the city. Yeah. Mm. Like, everyone's journey, you know, everyone in their 20s experiences that. Of course. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's about that, and um, her wonderful partner Emmett is a friend of mine and he's worked on the show he created it with her mm -hmm. and they came to me and said hey do you want to get involved and I was yeah. like of course and so <laughs> that was that was how that came to be so it's a reality show like dating show no, right it's, it's, it's a series it's a series okay, yeah okay. yeah yeah it's okay. like a drama but or comedy yeah and or there's a lot of funny moments and like disaster dating <laughs> things happen and yeah it's, it's so where is it based at is it in australia or in auckland new zealand in, so in new it's zealand. awkward is like because it's a-u-c-k so like auckland so it's kind of the play on, oh. so it's, you know, cause dating is awkward. So it's, kind of, <laughs> it's that play on the so word, but yeah. yeah. So what was your experience like as the executive producer? I know like here in Hollywood, women tend to fi have a hard time getting behind the camera or being mm -hmm. recognized for being behind mm -hmm. the camera. Is it same over there in New Zealand or are there more opportunities for women? It's, I think it's a little better in New Zealand where, you know, we're a very, liberal country we were the first country in the world to give women the vote yeah so mm -hmm. they're like you know yeah, yay. Women, yeah power. Totally. <laughs> um so yeah it is it is easier maybe mm -hmm. in new zealand than here but you know everywhere it's you know it's, it's growing so yeah. we're you yeah. know we're of course we're all for that of course nice. love that and how about the transition then from living over there to moving here what work are you doing here in los angeles uh well i moved over here uh nearly nine years ago now okay. um to attend stella adler acting academy and oh. that was my my reason mm. yeah and i ended up staying and um it's been so much fun like i just recently graduated from the acting school <gasps> congratulations oh, thank you. yes so yes you act and direct. i do what do you produce, prefer yeah. doing acting or directing? um acting is my creative side. I love delving into characters mm -hmm. and being other people. I mm -hmm. just played in my graduation production in a play. I did a production of The Birthday Party by Harold Pinter, and I played an Irish sidekick hitman. 
Oh my gosh. Um, so I was. <laughs> what in, a character. Yeah, I was in drag and, you know, wearing a suit, and I was like. You know, oh my god! Did the Irish accent and everything. I was gonna wow. say, yes. how did you pull off the Irish accent? Because yeah. that's hard. <laughs> but you were born and you grew up in England. I grew so up you, in England. Yeah. So my accent's like everywhere. all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I can pull off like anything, and they're like, okay, that works. <laughs> that's so yeah. funny. Um, yeah. So acting is great because I get to be these weird characters, mm. or um, you know, I get to explore mm -hmm. people and characters and traits of human beings that. I don't have. I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, I can be this person, and yeah. and that's great. But also, the producing is great because I can use my analytical side of my brain, mm -hmm. and I can um, organize, and I can sort of create projects. And it's great from seeing it from a script and seeing it through the process, and then you finally see the production Absolutely. on the big screen or the little screen, and it's. I think it's that's great. so fascinating. Mm. What would you say is the hardest part about getting like a show off the ground from a producer standpoint? Because you know, we see the final product mm. and we're like, that was great. Or we, we bash it and we're like, that was horrible. And people don't realize how difficult it is to produce anything. So mm. yeah. from your experience, what would you say is the hardest part and maybe the most beneficial part too? I think the hardest part is the initial starting it off, trying to find the money, yeah. trying to find everything coming money. together <laughs> yeah if anyone has any yeah <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> yeah. yeah i can well, do things with it just get your cash out <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah i have yeah. many projects let me know um <laughs> thank you charlotte for being with us today you, yeah. and sharing all we wish you all the luck thank and you. Trying to get that money. Lots no, of money, that, girl. Well, yeah. Get that back. I take PayPal. <laughs> yeah. I take PayPal. And guys, Too we funny. are taking a quick break, but we'll be right back. <laughs> So, Artifacts, mm -hmm. I have a big question for you. Okay. Are you a big fan of bad boys? <laughs> yes. Serious uh, yes. question. <laughs> yes, oh, I love them. Wait, wait, wait. Bad boys in general or the movie? I mean both, but like mainly the movie because our girl Maria got to interview the Ooh. two female leads in that movie who, guess what, happen to be Latinas. Oh. Very exciting. Yes, Kate Castillo and Paula Nunez, you guys. Maria gets to talk to them next, so check it out. All right, bye. Bad boys for a life. ¿Por qué nos gustarán tanto los chicos malos? <laughs> Porque son buenos. Porque son bien buenos. Son de como de caricatura. <laughs> Mike, we got more time behind us than in front. Man, please. I'm going to be running down criminals till I'm 100. Not me. I'm retiring. Aunque yo creo que esto es más bien Bad Woman, porque mira que eres mala en esta película, ¿eh? Sí, soy mala, mala, pero también tengo mis razones por las cuales soy mala, que no se les olvide. Lo que pasa es que todo el mundo está enamorado del personaje de Will Smith, pero, pero no han visto mi personaje y el por qué se vuelve ella así, no, a ella la traicionaron. Así que, este, pues bueno, y estuve enamoradísima de él, igual que el de ella, si es que algo hubo ahí que, ahora sí que por algo son las cosas, la burra no era discreta. Time we be good men. ¿Qué, y qué tal, explicarme un poquito, porque las dos son mujeres muy poderosas, a su manera, cada una son como antagonistas, ¿no? Tenemos a la mala mala, a la otra que es más bien policía. Y que... Contarme un poquito de estas super mujeres. Pues es, es increíble estar en una franquicia en donde, sobre todo, por ejemplo, si yo pienso en Bad Boys One, piensas en el personaje femenino y... Y era pues esta típica damisela en apuros, sí. ¿no? Que necesita ser salvada por el protagonista. Sí. Acá vemos a una uh, a, vemos a, a un personaje que no es una mujer así, es lo contrario, ¿no? Es como tú dijiste, una mujer poderosa que no necesita ser salvada por nadie, que tiene su propia historia, sus propios eh, retos en la vida uh -huh. y que casualmente tuvo una relación con Mike Larry, ¿no? El personaje interpretado uh, por Will. Pero, y eso es lo que a mí me gusta mucho, ¿no? El personaje de Kate también es una mujer poderosa, que no es víctima, que no es... Entonces son dos personajes muy fuertes en, en, en la película que no necesariamente son las caras bonitas de la, de la película. Entonces que sean esos los personajes femeninos me parece muy interesante y me parece un cambio también en una franquicia que podría haber caído en lo mismo que siempre cae. Marcus, somebody's trying to kill me. 
who wants to kill you. I don't trust a person that don't want to kill him. Hell, put my name up there. Thanks a lot. We got it, Marcus. We appreciate it. ¿Qué tal es hacer de mala? Es muy divertido, es muy divertido y haces cosas que, que, que pues uno nunca haría en la, vida, en la vida personal y que es la parte divertida de ser actor, ¿no? Es, es este, te, te das vuelo haciendo cosas y tu, tu imaginación, ¿no? Eh, puede irse a muchísimos lugares que a lo mejor siendo la buena, la típica, y me refiero a la buena porque to, todos somos buenos y malos, pero me refiero a la buena de antes, de las que habla Paola, ¿no? Que antes eran estas que necesitaban ser salvadas, que el hombre... Y mira, una película como esta no se, no se vería hace cinco años, o sea, con todo el movimiento que hay ahorita de, de las mujeres empoderadas y todo eso, un, los bad boys tienen que estar en ese, en ese nivel, y si nosotros no, o sea, no necesitamos salvar a nadie, ellas solitas se salvan y mejor nos encontramos en un lugar común los dos y puro amor. Me encanta, me encanta esto de, exacto, de, de esta de la damisela en apuros, no, ya se acabó. Ya no de acuerdo. Ahora estamos ahí bien fuertes. Y ya la última pregunta, hay mucho español en la, o sea, de, de hablar, que no sé, me gusta que no se traduce todo en inglés, que está en Spanish. Mira, pues, eh, eh, ellos querían, no estaban muy seguros de ser, si hacerlo en inglés o hacerlo en español. Entonces hicimos las dos versiones, hicimos versión inglés, versión español, y yo, desde luego, quería empujar la versión en español de mi personaje, por lo menos, porque es el personaje que se justifica perfectamente que hable en español. Y eso se me hace increíble tener español una mexicana en una película así, ¿no? Su personaje no se presta para eso, pero, pero no tiene que justificar lo que decía hace rato, eh, que, que es este mexicana o que es americana. O sea, ahorita ya es otro mundo, es otro, otra etapa. Y yo estoy feliz de que hayan dejado mi español. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with Artifacts and myself. Do not forget to follow us at Get It Girl TV and at LA TV Network. And send us questions, comments, I don't know, anything that we would like to see in the next show. But for now, we'll see you guys till next time. Bye.